finally, Cortez Mack has come back to YouTube. Um, <laughs> I'm so lame, y'all. But if you are a wrestling fan, you know that. You know where my intro just came from. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Cortez Mac TV, y'all. And this week, I am chopping it up with professional wrestler extraordinaire, AC Mac. We got five questions with him to get to know him a little bit better and know what a little better, a little better, and know what makes him tick, how he got into the wrestling industry, what his goals are, how being an African American wrestler kind of shapes his purpose a little bit differently than others. I can't wait for y'all to meet him, but you gotta stay tuned for that. Before we get into those five questions, it's time for the news of the week. So first up, we got to talk about my girl, Taraji P. Henson, and she tackled a, a serious topic when she sat down with Angela Simmons for her podcast the other day. And so domestic violence is something that I think we know, unfortunately, more, I, I won't even say women, because men deal with it too. But we know that a lot of people face domestic violence in different ways at one time or another. And Taraji P. Henson unfortunately is part of that number so she talked this week about how she was in a situation that it got worse and worse like as it went she said it started with you know pushing and shoving and the bruises she said once it got to a close fist and he drew blood that's when she knew she had to go and i'm putting this in the news because i just think it's interesting to think about how people have like a threshold for how much of something that they'll take before they say all right i gotta go she said that she still has a piece of her top lip missing from this which I never, I got the hiccups. I'm trying to hold it in so I don't have to re-record this. But um, I really feel like it's just shocking to know that somebody that's so outspoken, somebody that's just so, I just look at her as being so strong. You never know what battles people have gone through in their past to become the person that they are today. So shout out to Taraji for being so open and honest to talk about that. Um, Y'all go check that out for the full interview because she really, really was spitting some gems. So let's move on to our next piece of news for this week, y'all. We're going to lift the vibe a little bit. I just got to shout out Young Miami and Quavo for Scrub the Ground. Scrub the Ground. It's not called Scrub the Ground. It's called Scrub the Ground. And so I like that they took a classic round and round we go. Ah, round and round we go. Let me you say Scrub the Ground. Uh, let me let me come back. I love that song. I love that they did like a nice little uh, cover of it. And so they used a sample and they got a banger on their hands, y'all. Miami is... Carisha, I love you, girl. Like, you really killing the game. You fucking it up everything you do. So, if you have not watched the video, you got to go check. Like, they, I just heard about the song yesterday, and now they got a video out. So, they really, really working. Go check it out. Quavo, I think, is somebody we got to commend for keeping himself relevant and keeping himself um, working. You know, Migos, I was worried that they were going to fall off, to be honest. And then I was worried that Offset was going to... First, I thought Quavo was going to try to, you know, leave prematurely and, you know, do his own thing because he was the one that was labeled the one. He was labeled the guy. His solo career, I don't think, really took off the way he wanted it to yet. I think it will. I hope that they still do their stuff together and then just kind of venture out and do side projects and then come back and beat Amigos. So I say all that to say Miami still repping City Girls, Quavo still repping uh, Amigos, it's all, uh, what's their label? QC, quality control. I see y'all. And so keep working, keep putting out hits, keep putting out bangers. I appreciate y'all for the consistency with my ratchet ass. I love everything that y'all do. Let's get into our last piece of news for the week, y'all. I'm a little late with this one, but we got to send congratulations out to Eve. Eve, -E, the pit bull in the skirt. She about to be mommy dearest up in this bitch. So congrats are in order for Eve for being pregnant with her first baby with her husband, Maximilian. Y'all know her husband is very coined up. You know, Eve got the new show Queens out, so she got her own bag. This baby is about to be taken care of. Hopefully we got a new little mini rap icon or a little new tycoon or something on the way. I'm happy for Eve because I can't wait to see how this changes her persona in the public eye. I feel like when celebrities, I'm talking to y'all like I'll be rapping, but I feel like when celebrities become parents, we get to see a different, you know, a different aspect of them. We get to see them kind of grow and change as people. In the same way that your friends, when they get married and when they become friends, or I mean, when they become parents, <laughs> they, um, they evolve and you see a shift in the things that they think about. You see a shift in the things that they value. 
even the way that they, you know, approach conversation in their day to day. So I'm excited to see how it changes Eve. You know, she's back in the public eye with this show. And I think that this is just really an exciting time for her. So we're going to clap it up for Eve. We're going to send prayers up that you have a safe, um, a safe carriage. What would you say? A safe pregnancy and then a safe delivery as well. So that's the news for this week, y'all. Stay tuned for the interview with AC Mac. Five questions up next. This week, y'all, I am joined by, you know what? I'm gonna start letting my guests introduce themselves because, I mean, y'all finna talk to them anyway. What's up? I bet. This is the professional wrestler, indie wrestler. Uh, according to the PWI, one of the best top 500 wrestlers on the planet. Period. So shout out to that. Uh, this is AC yeah. Mac. <laughs> y'all, say what's up to AC Mac. They just say what's up. Hey. All right. So, now the introductions are out of the way. He is here for five questions with me. And of course, within those five questions, there are a million other questions. So yes. just be ready to talk for a okay. little bit. Okay. You really want to just get to know me. All right, you cool with that? All right, question one. So, you are a professional wrestler. We're going to get into that. We're going to get into <laughs> that. But I feel like we got to peel back the layers of you as a wrestler. And that starts with where you're from. Where are you from? I'm actually born and raised right here in Atlanta. Okay. Right here. Okay. On the, <laughs> most yes. people, I don't want to call them transplant, but most people just aren't from here anymore. Um, you so grew here. They grew I agree. <laughs> right. That's it. <laughs> was yeah. Akbar. Shout out to Akbar. Yeah. And so I'm just really proud of that. I'm really proud to say I'm, I'm from here. Uh, West Side, Cascade, Campbellton area. Okay. Swats. Uh, same house, you know, the whole time. So, mm. yeah. From okay. here. So let me ask you this then. Now we're going into them offshoot questions. Gotcha. So, Atlanta. Yes. You know, Atlanta has a signature, and I feel like everybody that's from here, of course they claim it, but not only do they claim it, I feel like it's clear where they're from and what they do, like Ludacris, Outkast, Monica, all of these people, we know that they're from here. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that's true of you as well with what you do? Oh, yes. As far as wrestling or just like how I do it, you mean? I think, yeah, in terms of your persona, all of that. Oh, yeah, 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 I think so. I think specifically in wrestling and, and coming out and not allowing the announcer to announce me, but to do it myself. And then um, just to hear that Southern twang in, in the voice, it kind of sounds like a black creature and it kind of sounds like hmm. T.I. a little bit, but just like... T.I. <laughs> somebody else had to point it out to me. I didn't notice it until they said something, but... I definitely think like that's the most Atlanta thing I do in wrestling, yeah. Okay. So I feel like, you know, and I've seen you live, I think that you are definitely a great speaker and the microphone is one of your strengths. So let me ask you question two. Mm -hmm. Question two. Have you always been somebody that was outspoken and that like, you know, like being in front of people? Kind of. Mm. I think it was kind of a slow burner, and it just kind of happened without me realizing it. Mm -hmm. uh, like throughout my childhood, I did things like um, acting classes and forced into like monologue competitions. And uh, I was a radio personality at Georgia State when I was a student there. So okay. I think it was these small little nuggets that kind of made me comfortable mm -hmm. speaking in front of people or performing in front of people. Did you ever, when's the most nervous you've ever been? I want you to think about, and maybe just in your professional yeah. career, what's the most nervous you've ever been in front of a crowd? So that's actually really, really hard to answer because mm -hmm. I am nervous almost all of the time. But we wouldn't guess that. Right, right, right. You wouldn't guess that. I try my best to hide it, but like, it's like damn near stage fright of just... Not stage fright. Like, I don't. The, okay, wait a minute. Wait the a minute. anxiety and like having to do the breathing exercises and the mm -hmm. up chucking and it's 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 a real thing. Mm -hmm. And just having to, to calm myself or listening to music or just backstage is either really small or really crowded. So I mm -hmm. always try to go outside and just to kind of get away from people asking me questions and trying to talk. Clear your head. Yeah, yeah. and just okay. kind of be with myself. But yeah, I mean, I guess the most nervous. Um, probably when I went down to Florida to be an extra for NXT, mm. I got picked to have a match with uh, Dijak um, on TV. And mm -hmm. the, the tapings didn't start till like 7 or 8 p.m. And then call time was 1. And that's when I found out I was going to have the match. So I'm just hours and hours of like not eating because I'm scared I'm going to grow up. And just 
being jittery the whole time. So I think that was probably the most nervous, the most exhausting too. I bet, <laughs> yeah, that's a long wait. And just knowing like you're gonna be, ooh, yeah. yeah, I can only imagine. Yeah. I can only imagine. Do you feel like it's good to get nervous at this point? Or do you, cause I feel like some people, and that might sound like a weird question, but I feel like I've heard somewhere that people say, when you stop getting nervous or when you stop getting that excitement, that's when you know something's wrong. So yeah. I think, do you agree with that? Uh, yeah, uh, kinda, kinda. I get where they're coming from for sure. Sometimes, you know, you're not nervous because you're comfortable, you, you know what you're doing, or you, you know who your opponent is, and you yeah. know what the segment is. Um, if that spark is gone, I think that's what they're saying. If that spark okay. is gone, if you don't, if you're just numb, if you don't care, mm -hmm. uh, if you're just not excited, then yeah, I think it, it might be time to make some adjustments. But I get what they're saying. Yeah. 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 I think that's a good. That's fair. That's a fair assessment. Not that you would be unfair. <laughs> so you just brought up adjustments, mm -hmm. and that's a good segue. Thank you for the segue. That's a good so again segue into question three. So I want to ask you about how you've had to adjust due to the pandemic. You know, we went into it. Mm -hmm. We kind of going out of it, but we not really out of it. Where what changes did you have to make to your whole game, your whole career uh, approach? Everything just became digital. Yeah, everything became digital. So like, obviously you're already on social media, but you try to increase your presence uh, to, to reach your followers more now because mm -hmm. they can't see you in person. Mm -hmm. uh, people push their merchandise more. Um, having to get used to filming shows as like tapings, as like TV tapings mm -hmm. without a crowd, mm -hmm. but you're gonna film like two or three shows back to back mm -hmm. with just nobody there. Ooh. Absolutely hate it, but I mean, it's what either that you, or no shows. What did you do to motivate? How do y'all stay motivated in the times where you feed off of a crowd mm -hmm. and the crowd is not there? Do you create one in your head? Not what well, that too, <laughs> <laughs> that too. But the roster, the rest of the guys that are there, yeah, uh, we they kind of help. Uh, okay, so they help get you motivated backstage, or sometimes we use the. The roster as the crowd. Okay, they come out. Right, they're right, already right. there. Right, they're mm -hmm. already there, and you know we're all fired up on energy drinks and, and <laughs> like that. So we we just kind of feed off of that. That that has helped a okay. lot. And I guess in a weird kind of blessing in disguise, it helped a lot of us get closer with That's one so another. And so it forced us to, if you're there all day long mm -hmm. filming three or four shows. You know, that guy over there that you've never had a match with or you've never even talked to, mm. you might open up a conversation just for the hell of it, just because yeah. you're there all day. And yeah. you know, you'll be surprised at what comes out of that, so. I love it. <laughs> all right, so we about to get ready to move on to question four. You ready? Yeah. Right. So you're in an industry that's increasingly becoming more diverse. Yes. But, you know, representation is still an issue um, to some extent, some people would say. Um, what do you say to being an African American performer in an industry that's making, trying to make strides in the right direction? I choose to be a doer. Mm. So, obviously, there's a problem. There's a there's a huge huge gap in representation. I do agree. Um, not to sound too harsh, but I don't want to just sit around and complain. Mm -hmm. I don't want to constantly point out the issue. I would rather go out there and do it. I would rather help shows that, you know, foster black talent thrive. So for example, GCW has a show called For the Culture that they mm -hmm. do a few times a year where the entire wrestling car, every match is nothing but black talent. So shows like that, I want to make sure they sell. It, I, I want to be on the show as much as possible. I want to support as much as possible. If there's merch, I want to do that. I want to help promote. I want to be on the show. If not, I want to be in commentary, help set up, whatever the case may have you. Um, I want to help promote other black wrestlers. A simple retweet to help get this stuff out there. Um, what else? Just anything that supports us, I want to make sure we do. Like, yeah, we're all brothers, and yes, we all want to support everybody, but specifically for us to help bridge that gap, I'm all for I'm all supporting. What's your name? I don't know you. I don't. You look like me, though. Mm -hmm. I'm supporting. So, 
10 seconds, shout out a few black wrestlers that we may not know that we should know. Give us give us a few in 10 seconds. I'm counting my head. Me? Mm-hmm. Give oh, us some. That we, oh. Uh, Man, my mom, go. Uh, Darius Lockhart, uh, uh, AJ Gray, um, Trevor Eon, Joe Black, uh, David Ali. Um, oh, God, so many. So many, so many. Leon Ruff. Uh, Liam Gray. Uh, uh, I'm trying to hit all regions. Uh, hit one more, hit one more. We got one second left. We got one second left. Uh, uh, Darius Martin. There we go. <laughs> so many more. So right, many right. more, y'all. It's... And I feel like it's take it's hard to do that because there's so many to choose from. Yes. Yeah. Not that yes. it's not any. It's just so many to choose from. In fact, the PWI coming out this year. This was the first year that they recognized uh, Righteous Red. He does a list of the 500 best black wrestlers wow. on the planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he posted that, and that was actually in the PWI this year. That's crazy. And I'm not sure if this is if he got this because of him making the list. But it would make sense. So now he's on the voting committee for the PWI dope. as a whole. Oh, dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's That's pretty cool. Dope. So like I said, you know, doing it, it mm-hmm. we slowly we slowly bridging that gap. Okay. We slowly bridging it. We slowly getting there. So let's talk about, speaking of getting there, look, every question leads to the next year. We, we so good at this. So question <laughs> five, getting there. Let's mm-hmm. talk about your short-term and your long-term goals. Mm-hmm. What you got lined up? Short-term goals, I want to crack the 200 next year for the PWI. I want to get out to the West Coast and wrestle. Okay, Um, we manifesting. Yeah, 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 before the end of the year. And I want to wrestle in front of my extended family. Okay. So like your distant cousins and your aunts and uncles who I don't see on a regular, I don't hear from, or I don't call out to on a regular. Uh, They know I do this, but they're kind of like, I don't get it, or. Mm. Whatever makes you happy, I'm there. So I just kind of want to perform in front of them, wherever that may be, just so they they can see the magic. How was your family that had seen you? Like, what was their reaction when they came to their first show? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my brother, he thought it was funny in a good way because, you know, we grew up together. So he, he's known since day one. Uh, my mom was like a... Hmm, I guess this is real for you, huh? I guess this is what you want to do. She she supports me as much as she can. She works a, a ton, so okay. she's not around a whole, whole lot, but she's definitely for it. She just wants me to be safe. She wants me to be careful. But, uh, and my sister's like, whatever gets you famous, I'm, I'm here. You know, whatever gets you famous. <laughs> yes, sister, I'm with you. Yes. Shout out to your sister. <laughs> The wise, the wise. She's sister. like, whatever yeah. works, whatever. If you're on TV, I don't care if it's Instagram, I don't care if it's this, this, and that. Just as long as you're famous, I'm we can ride that. Hell yeah. <laughs> ride that motherfucking way. I'm with that. <laughs> who is your um who is your biggest inspiration? Uh my biggest inspiration is probably Kanye West. Okay. I know he's not the, the fan favorite right now or ever. ever. But <laughs> I was about to say it. But uh <laughs> Um, I, I love that he speaks his mind no matter who disagrees with him. I love that he's brave enough to try something different and then stand there and tell you why it's great. Mm-hmm. Um, even though it takes the public a few years to realize, oh, oh, that's what you were trying to do. Yeah. Um, I, I love the bravado. I love the in your face kind of, mm-hmm. you know, so that that demeanor is what I wanted to bring to wrestling. The, the heel or the bad guys, we like mm-hmm. to call them. The, the loud mouth, very arrogant, very like, I know I'm great, yeah. and this is why. Yeah. And I'm not leaving until you it. agree. Yes. <laughs> so uh, that that energy is, is what I kind of cling to the most. Which is perfect to be a performer, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> I feel that. And his performances. Yeah. Like all his tours and the stages and stuff. It's just so cool to see. It's, it's just visual orgasm, so I'm I'm here for it. Yeah, I'm about to tap into my inner Kanye. Y'all looking <laughs> to be watching this right now? How dare you not subscribe right. yet? You finna take me for granted? <laughs> right. <laughs> just channel something in me. You know, what the motherfucking beast. <laughs> All right. So as we get ready to wrap up, I want to give you um, the opportunity to play a game that I play with a lot of my guests. Okay. And that's gonna be one gotta go. Oh no! <laughs> oh, I see these online, and I'm like, I'm not doing that one. I'm not doing that one. But okay. you're doing this one because you own Cortez Mac TV, baby. You ready? Yeah. All right. I so, guess so. Being that you are an in-ring general, 
but you are also a mic worker by trade. I'm gonna give you four of the best of all time in terms of in-ring wrestlers that just had a good handle on the microphone as well. Okay. All right, you ready? Yeah. It's gonna be present and old. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna give you a good mix. Number one, you already know The Rock. Okay. Number two, I'm giving you MJF. Okay. Number three, I'm giving you The Miz. Okay. And number four, you ready for number four? Yeah. One of the best mic workers. I'm gonna give you Triple H. All right, so off the bat, I'm not getting rid of The Rock or Triple H. Because fun fact, those are my top two favorite wrestlers of all time. Okay. Rock is one, Triple H is two. Okay. So they're not going anywhere. Okay. Rock and Triple H stay. So you between MJF and The Miz. Who are you getting rid of? Mm. I feel like I already know your choice. That's No, so I like both of these guys, though. <laughs> um, So in today's day and age, it's so hard to be a heel mm -hmm. and get people to hate you. Mm -hmm. They both do it well, but I feel like MJF has an edge because people genuinely don't like him. <laughs> I've, I've seen Twitter. It's, it's, and he's, I don't want to say he's a better bad guy than the Miz, but he just, Ooh. I feel it more with MJF. And I hate to say it, but I guess I'm letting go to the Miz. Ooh. And I like the Miz. I, I like all four of these guys, but. I did good with this one guy. Yeah. Right. I feel bad. He's still awesome. He's still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's he, okay. Yeah, he's awesome. He was awesome. awesome. Oh, that 2016 promo, though. Are you changing your mind? No, no, no. I can't change my mind now. Well, yeah, we get the decision has been made. We getting rid of Miz, and we also are almost out of time, y'all. Before we wrap it up, I would be remiss if I did not tell you these people where they can find you. I'm gonna let you tell them. I think oh you yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm everywhere. AC underscore Mac or AC dash Mac. M A C K with a K. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, the yellow pages. The yellow pages. <laughs> Tumblr, if that's still your thing, I'm everywhere. Okay. So, AC Mac, it's easy as that, it's consistent, just everything AC Mac. For my people that are wanting to come see you, come check you out live, where can they catch a show or where can they go online to watch you perform? Oh, bet. Uh, so, online, we'll do that first. Online, uh, we have a, it's kind of like Netflix for independent wrestling. It's called IWTV. Uh, it's on Roku, it's on the App Store, you can get it. I, th I think it's $10 a month. Um, they do have promo codes. I can give you one. Just let me know. Um, Hit him up. So that's me. He told you where to find him for the promo. That's where you can watch us at online. In person, like I said, I'm from Atlanta. So my local shows are Action down in Tyrone, Georgia. Okay. Uh, Championship Wrestling, which is once a month, but at center stage. So that's pretty cool. Oh, good. Um, and then Southern Honor, which is up in Canton. And then a few other shows we got lined up. I can't give you too many specifics because they haven't made any announcements okay, yet. Okay. Uh, but we got some stuff up in Indiana. We got some stuff up okay. in New York coming. Okay, now we on the low uh, minute. We, we got some stuff in Tennessee coming. Uh, further on down the line, we got some stuff in D.C. Uh, so, yeah, it's pretty exciting. Still trying to get out on the West Coast, but that's, that's like all the immediate things we got coming, yeah. West Coast promoters, if you're watching, hey. make it happen. Our boy's ready to show out. Only, only he can do what he can do, y'all. I'm giving you this from somebody that has seen him live. He is worth the ticket. Hey. He's a dope performer. And like you said, you know, we deserve to see ourselves at the top. We deserve to see ourselves kind of winning and prospering. So I think that there's so many black wrestling fans out here that I want to be exposed to you. And not even just them. I think everybody kind of needs to support independence and talk about and, and think about the fact that these people are really, really living out their dreams, putting their bodies on the line for us, y'all. We gotta do this, we gotta do this. So again, thank you. Stress the bodies on the line party. <laughs> it's the bodies on the line for him. It's the bodies Ooh, on the line for yes. him, y'all. The support, I feel like, for me as a content creator, and I'm on the soapbox right now, but for me as a content creator, I feel like the support, people don't get how important support and sharing stuff 
buying a ticket or telling somebody where to buy a ticket, they don't get how important that stuff is. Even just retweeting something as opposed to just liking it. They don't get how important that is from our side. And so to add to that, like, cause for me, I feel bad enough like spending my money on stuff. You literally could die doing what you do. And there's people that'll like, just like something. I think that y'all gotta, we gotta put it out there, y'all. Yeah. We gotta support each other and build each other up. All right, show's on the way. Also on the way here, we got Who Won the Week. Stay tuned. Oh, believe it or not, <laughs> believe it or not, we are almost out of time, y'all. So before we wrap this episode up, I got to give away Who Won the Week. And this week is going to one of my favorite females in the rap game. Y'all know I love the girls. And so Flo Millie is getting Who Won the Week this week because Colors came out with a new addition this week. Colors, y'all know they do the little dope. Um, like studio sessions where artists be like in the booth rapping the colors behind them and everything It's a whole visual vibe like baby mother's done it earth game Those are my favorite two so far and now I'm adding Flo Millie to the list. So if you're not familiar with her, she's a dope raw Amazing um, female rapper from Alabama. I don't know pretty much any artist from Alabama. So she's my favorite So put on for the town Flo Millie y'all need to go check it out I am so proud of her for broadening her horizons and getting her brand out there I'm trying to do the same thing myself girl, but you doing it And so that's why you won this week y'all go check it out go check out all of her music She's you will not be sorry if you haven't listened to her You're gonna really really be surprised because she is putting bars out every song I've heard I love. So congrats to Flo Millie. Thank y'all for tuning in for another episode of Cortez Mag TV. Hit that subscribe button below and I will see y'all for the next episode. Take care of each other. Take care of yourselves, y'all. You all, we all we got. I hate to say that and I know it sounds cliche, but it's really real. Like this world is getting crazy and I'm just seeing people have such a lack of regard for each other, a lack of regard for themselves. It takes nothing to spread kindness and it starts with being kind to yourself. So treat yourself to something good. Pat yourself on the back for treating yourself to this episode because you clearly have good taste. And I will see y'all next time. It's Cortez Mac TV. Let's go.